Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here for our Quick Tip Thursday session. These sessions are 15 minutes long, so shorter than our normal hour sessions, where we go over some quick tips just to uh, kind of get you on track for whatever the topic is. And today's topic is digital painting with authentic results. So today we're going to be taking a look at Topaz Impression. and what areas of Topaz Impression do we really need to pay attention to to create authentic looking hand-painted results uh, within this digital program? If you're unfamiliar with Topaz Impression and you want a full-on introduction to the program, go ahead and go to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash topazlabs and click on the Topaz Impression introduction and that's going to be an hour-long session where we go over each and every single aspect of the program. For this particular program, we're going to be going over five areas very quickly and just kind of touching on them and showing you how Topaz Impression really incorporates the same methods and characteristics that you'd find in hand paintings um, within the program. And those areas are going to be realistic brush textures, texture overall, texture not only with the brushes but the buildup of paint as well as the texture of the media that you are painting on. Uh, the blending of paint and blending of colors is very essential when it comes to painting and making your digital paintings look and feel realistic. Also, getting non-perfect edges. Most of the time, um, when you look at paintings really up close, you're not going to have a very, it's not going to be a perfect edge. might be very well, um, a sharper edge than others, but one way that I'm finding that it's kind of uh, faster to kind of create a more hand-painted effect is to kind of mess up your edges just a little bit. So we're going to look at uh, a tool that does that very quickly for us. And lastly, we're going to look at some color variation. Not only the blending and opaqueness of colors uh, bleeding in from each other from layer to layer, but also color variation of the brush strokes themselves, which is actually a new tool. If you haven't updated to version 1.1.1, we have a free update. I know that we already talked about 1.1.0 being released last week, um, but if you just go into Topaz Impression, you should see a little pop up that says we have some updates, and in those updates are some very cool sliders that we added in. So um, it's updated not only in the program but also the user guide. So let's take a look at this image today. I'll show you where we started off here. All right, this is the original image which I love um, and it's a beautiful image but it's also a beautiful subject for the type of painting that I was wanting to create. And the first thing I did was take it into Topaz Impression and I applied a preset which was Turner Preset Sunset 2 which is one of my favorites and um, this is the result. So within Topaz Impression I ended up taking a look at all of those areas that we're going to be taking a look at and I ended up with my own uh, customized hand painted effect that I really really enjoyed and then just to top it all off because it's my new favorite companion to Topaz Impression, I took it into Topaz Restyle to get a little bit of a more um, color that I was envisioning, less realistic color of a sunset and more artistic or impressionistic type of uh, feeling. I wanted to get a little bit more teal and purple and brown kind of within there. So let's go ahead and take this uh, original background image in. We'll kind of go through this whole process. So if you're unfamiliar with Topaz Impression, this is the new interface and basically you just have your main preview when you show, um, when you pop in and it's going to give you your last used results and that's what you're seeing here. Um, but in, And then you have your uh, presets on the side. We have a featured list, but if you don't like the featured list, you can go into any other list or the all effects. So I'm going to go into the painting list and just take a look at some of the things. And this is really what I went through for this particular image. I knew I wanted to get something very messy and Turner-esque because he is one of my favorite painters. And, um, well, I created a preset that uh, <laughs> kind of resembled certain characteristics of his paintings, so I knew I wanted to go to the Turner preset, so let's just scroll down there. But you can see we have a ton of different painting presets that you can start off with, and you don't even have to start off with a preset. You can go directly into your um, sliders just by clicking on the 
slider icon over here to the right. So I'm going to go back down to the featured list here in Turner Sunset 2. And that's where I started off with this image. To get into the presets to see where exactly the presets are for this particular um, or sliders are for this particular preset, you just click on the little preset icon in the middle of that preset and it'll jump on in there, it'll slide out, and you'll see all of your uh, parameters here for you to check out. So we're going to check out first the brush strokes. Up at the very top you'll see different brush strokes and what makes these brush strokes special is that they are, they are real brush strokes that we took pictures of, number one painted them, took pictures of, masked out the background and uh, got the textured edges, the realistic textured edges and imported into the program. So as you scroll in close to these um, paint strokes, you'll notice that they look very realistic as far as the edges themselves. I'm going to take my paint opacity way up so you can really start to see the strokes. And that's why they look so realistic is because they are. They're, they're real paint strokes that we're, um, that we're using in the algorithm behind the scenes of the program. So that's one way that um, impression just right out of the box is going to help you create more authentic looking hand paintings. And then the next area that I, and that was kind of the edge texture of the brushes. The next area that I wanted to talk about was um, the actual texture, not only of the brushes themselves, but the interior area of the brushes. As you can see, the interior of these strokes, let's actually choose a different stroke so you can really see it. There we go. So the interior of these paint strokes are textured as well. So you see the ridges that you would see in a natural brush stroke. Um, so it's not just the edges or the buildup on the very, very edges. It's actually the interior of the brush stroke that really shows off its texture as well that lends itself to be more realistic um, hand paintings. I'm going to go back to the Turner stroke that we were using. Here we go. And now let's go ahead and talk about this paint volume and the paint opacity. That's really going to help with the blending of your paint. The paint opacity especially, as you uh, could probably tell when I took that up, your the paint just becomes much more solid feeling and less opaque. And as you take that opacity down, you'll start to see a blending of the layering of colors. So this blue and purple will start to blend together. This red and blue will start to blend together to create purple. And so it becomes a much more natural feel um, as you take that opacity down and blend those colors. Um, if you're looking for a more blended image, if you're looking for something that has a lot more solid paint, obviously taking that op opacity up will give you that result. But most of the time, there's at least some sort of blend going on. Now you can still have some opaqueness to your paint where it blends in naturally but still get lots of texture in your strokes and that's by increasing your paint volume. So you get the, the opportunity to still create heavy strokes that are blended together by using those two sliders and that's um, the blending of the strokes will really again lend itself to feeling much more realistic and natural naturally hand painted if that's the effect that we're going for and that is what we're going for today. Um, the next area that I wanted to talk about, I'm just going to kind of go down instead of going in the list that I gave you the next area is stroke color variation that I actually want to show you today. This is one of the new sliders in version 1.1.1 and what this does is it allows for you to start to get different colored strokes in areas of solid color in your original image. So instead of just creating brush strokes of the same color uh, from your original image, as you take the stroke color variation up, you'll start to pull in other stroke colors. Now you can go crazy and really get a variety here, but I like to keep it fairly low and just go to a 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 if I'm going for a more natural look, just to start bringing in some variation because that's going to be more at least the way that I would paint naturally. So I'm going to take that a little bit down, maybe to 0.05. That looks good. So that's an area that can help you get more authentic results. Another area that I really think um, is 
a great method just to quickly kind of mess up the perfection of the lines that it's going to automatically create within um, a lot of digital painting programs. I'm going to take that spill slider all the way down and you'll see what I'm saying here. Even with these long brush strokes and very hard brush strokes, um, or not hard, but long and messy kind of brush strokes that we have here. If I take that spill slider all the way down, you're still going to see a fairly strong edge because of the original image here. So if you want to mess that up a little bit, you can take that spill slider up and it's going to basically blend the edge colors together and have some of the brush strokes just kind of going into each other versus a strong line. And it, and it, act, it, it starts to make it feel a little bit more like the way that I would paint, you know, just super messy. And um, I am a bit of a messy painter. <laughs> but it starts to give that hand painted effect for me. And then the last area I really want to um, I really want to talk about today to get a more authentic result is going to be down at the bottom. That's going to be in our last module in the texture module. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on my background type because I don't like all of these little white spots that are coming through on the edges. And that's just um, going to happen sometimes where it bleeds through if your brush strokes aren't uh, are a little bit too opaque, but we have included in the latest version of background type where you can look at the solid color background or you can switch it to the actual background image which will pull those colors from your image in and kind of fill in those spaces. So I'm just going to do that and that helped me there. And then the texture, I'm going to take a look at that because I'm noticing as I'm scrolling in that I, I'm not seeing a canvas texture. And that's because it's, um, this particular preset is on a paper texture. So instead, I'm going to just scroll up to my canvas areas and choose my personal favorite canvas. Eek. It is canvas four. Four or five, I, I really like. Let's try four. Ooh, let's try five. We're going back to four. <laughs> All right, so here's Candace Four, and you can see that really um, started to give a realistic texture of what the media you're actually painting on is. If you want to take that strength down, because the strength is very high for that, you can, and start to make it look like it has a little bit more paint buildup on that texture in some areas versus others. You can also change the size. Here's before, here's after. Let's scroll out. And those are the main areas that you want to take a look at whenever you are trying to produce authentic results um, in a digital painting program like this. Um, impression really incorporates these characteristics and methods that you would use um, if you were hand painting. And again, those are all the different types of textures, not only brush texture, several different types of brush texture, but also the texture of the medium. And the blending of the paint as well as the blending of the colors and the opacity of the colors and then the edges as well with that spill slider so those are the areas I wanted to take a look at if your texture isn't doing exactly what you want it to do by the way definitely take a look at this lighting um, you can simulate which which direction the light is going to be coming from and it really changes the overall feeling of those strokes so just click on um, the different areas that you might want your light to come from. So I'm going to choose this and say OK. And fairly quickly we were able to go from this image to a much more customized than just the preset hand painted effect. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. I hope again that you got some quick tips out of this session on how to use Topaz Impression to help create authentic looking hand painted results within your paintings or your digital paintings. All right, thanks again everybody and we'll be talking to you next week. Bye bye.